Hey guys, so I wanted to start a new series on my channel called What They Didn't Teach Me at Nail School. And these videos are just going to get some of you guys ready if you want to pursue your career in the cosmetology field and become a nail technician. Um, I went to, um, it was owned by salon schools and it was just a division that was near me. I did my classes at the spa school and I did my clinical hours at the um, small little division that they had where I used to live. I just wanted to do these videos just to let you guys know what they didn't teach me at school. I didn't really find that my education was as good as it could have been and that I'm only saying that for if you're thinking about going to a salon school school. Um, so just so you guys know, um, I'm not talking about any other nail school. I'm just talking about the salon school group. They didn't do a very good job in my opinion. Um, and I had very nasty things to say to them in my review when they sent it to me in the mail. I definitely filled it out and I was definitely mean about it. Like, I was not happy with my education. Before we get into the actual lesson plan for today, um, and it's not going to be like do your homework and things like that. We're just going to be really casual and just talk. So I really, really encourage you guys to use the comment section. If you have any comments or things that you want to add into the discussion, these are just basically going to be discussions. Um, every week is what I want to do. Um, so I did school for full time and it took me about... I had to leave because I was sick, so um, it took me a little bit longer, but I think I started in November, so November, December, January, February, so it took me about four months, and I think it was supposed to take me three. Tuition, it costs around, when I went to school, around $5,000, um, maybe like maybe like a little smidgen more, but it wasn't any more than a six. I would just recommend if you are interested in doing this, definitely watch these videos just because they're going to give you a little bit of a inside of you as to what you're going to learn at school and if this is something that you want to do. Also, another thing is um, if you're really interested in pursuing this career, definitely go talk to uh, one of the school managers or whatever they're called, I can't remember at this moment, and figure it out. Um, like figure out a time that you guys can sit down and talk at the school and just talk write down a ton of questions and ask her them all and just get into it this is what we use when I went to school and this is my old book this is the Milady's standard nail technology um, fifth edition revised fifth edition so this is the book that I am using so if you guys are already in school and you just need help studying um, just so you guys know this is the book that I am particularly using so I did chapter one through chapter four all in one thing because I didn't feel like everything needed to be covered and we didn't cover this chap these chapters at all when we were at school well I think we cha covered chapter four when we were at school but not very much it was literally like five questions on a paper and we were done so I'm gonna be reading off of um these two lesson plan sheets that I have typed up myself just using information from the Milady's book um I'm going to have a link to any documents that I'm reading off of today so that you guys can you know grab it up also you are in no way being licensed by watching these videos you have to go through the um, through your cosmetology state board and do your schooling and take your test to become a licensed manicurist you cannot become a licensed manicurist by watching these videos <laughs> um just in case anybody was confused by that i'm not licensing you i am just informing you go ahead and get into it um the first thing that i think is really important that they did not cover is what do you want to be so i'm just going to kind of show you guys a brief overview of how i've done this and then we're going to get into the information and then i also have another page like so okay so like I said link is down below for this um, so there are different career paths when you are becoming a manicurist you could either become the traditional nail technician or you could go into the salon management if you choose to do the nail technician that means that you want to um, provide clients with any type of natural nail service to luxurious manicures any and pedicures you have to do it all if you don't like feet you're probably gonna hate this because 
you are going to touch somebody else's feet. I don't like feet if they look really gross. Um, I don't have a foot fetish though either where I'm like, yes, feet. But, um, you know, it's not one of my favorite things to do <sighs> starting off. But then as the pedicure, pedicure goes on, I really do enjoy it. Um, if you're going into salon management, that means that it's more of the business side and you could possibly potentially own a actual salon or a spa. Um, you could be an inventory manager or assistant manager or just anything like that. The possibilities are truly endless with that, but you do not have to be a licensed cosmetologist or anything like that to own a salon. You yourself could just open it up as a business and you would have to have managing people that have a managing license work there. Um, so that's just something you have to keep in mind if you are going in because you want to open up your own salon. You really could just go through business school, figure it out, do it that way, hire a managing um, position and they can run the salon. You do want somebody though that knows what they're talking about so just keep that in mind. There are some other jobs that you can do outside of the salon and that would be a project ed educator for a company, possibly a manufacturer, freelance editorial nail technician which means that you're going to do really cool fabulous nails for um, photo sessions like for a magazine. Um, you could become a beauty school instructor or a retail sales management management person. There are different types of salons that you can work at too. Um, you can work at just a typical nail salon that only provides nail services. You could work at a full service salon which means that they also do hair as well as um, nail services too. You could also work at a full service salon which also provides hair services as well as nail services or you could work at a day spa which includes um, hair services, nail services, and skin and body services, so estheticians and things like that. So there are plenty of different options for you guys to work at. Um, and this business is booming, um, but you have to be right for the job. Like, you're getting judged at every interview. You just have to know that. that that's what's going to happen, and people are catty in this business, and it totally sucks, but that's just sometimes how it is. Now I'm going to move on to just being successful um, because they never went over this and I feel as if a lot of girls did struggle um, afterwards in being successful just because we weren't taught a lot so that's why. It's not just because they didn't know what they were doing, it was just because we weren't taught. So some things that I think that are important um, working in a salon, uh, since I have worked in a salon two times, um, and then I just found out it's not for me, but I really love doing it as a hobby. You really have to know how to manage your time. You prioritize the most important tasks of your day. Um, like, your clients are always first, and then you also need to, you know, leave time for the service between, you have to leave time for that client and before the first one so you have to know how to do these services within an amount within a certain amount of time you also need to leave time to sanitize in between so don't just you know you can do acrylics in an hour schedule them for an hour and 30 minutes because you need to clean all of your implements which takes 10 minutes for the ones that need to be sanitized and then you need to clean the surface the seat like a lot of things and that's what we're going to go over in lesson Two. Definitely don't take on more than you can handle, meaning uh, more clients than you knew than you have ever done before and they all want acrylics in the same day and you work a five hour shift or whatever it may be, you're probably not going to get that done. Approaching new clients, since if you guys are just now starting school, you're in school but you haven't worked in the field yet, you're going to have new clients and you're going to want to approach them in a professional manner. So definitely need to be positive and smile. You definitely want to make them feel like they are at home. And I would definitely introduce myself and say, um, you know, just reach my hand out, shake their hand and say um, your full name. So just just like that. It's pretty simple, um, but a lot of people get really nervous about meeting different people. And if that's what you are in the boat, because that's what the boat I was in, I doesn't work for me sometimes. Um, and then with new clients, 
and every client, whether they are just returning to get a service done, you kind of want to have a consultation. The first consultation you'll have with every new client is going to be a longer one, so you're going to have to schedule the time in for that. So manage your time. Um, but you're also going to have many consultations with returning customers to just get an acrylic fill or something like that. So um, schedule, you just have to schedule it into your time. So what a consultation is, and I don't know, maybe some of you have had it for your hair, maybe not for your nails, but I really do think and I really do believe that it is super important to have a, to have a consultation with your clients. You need to know what their, you know, um, what their concerns are about their nails and some things about their health too and you'll find out why later in some other lesson plans because, um, you know, you just need to know these things and they might think, wow, I've never had anybody ask these questions, but they're going to be more comforted that you know a lot more information about them um, just because. When you're having the consultation, you definitely want to have some type of form. So, let me grab mine. So, this is the client consultation form that I found on nailsmag.com. I'm going to leave um, the link to the website because I'm not taking credit for this at all. And I'm also going to link you guys to get this form. Um, so you guys can fill it out and see because you can use this. Um, it's free for any licensed person to use. Just here at the top, it just says client consultation form. And you're literally just going to hand this to them. You can have it on a nice clipboard and a pen and just hand it to them and say, hey, can you just take, you know, five minutes out of your time and fill this out before I get started? And I'm going to go set up the rest of the stuff that I need to set up, however you want to word it. And it just asks for their name, their email, their address, their phone, um, home, sell, and work if they want to, but at least one number should be given. Would you prefer we contact you, um, your home phone, your cell phone, your work phone, whatever. Um, what services made you want to come to the salon? Um, do you have any condition that could affect service options, allergies, diabetes, circulation disorders, slow healing, sensitivity to cosmetic ingredients, um, pregnancy? How would you like your nails, hands, and feet to be different than you than they are today? So what do you want to improve? You know, like let's say my nails are really brittle and eggshell-like. I want them to become stronger and longer and things like that. What services have you enjoyed in the past? How would you have improved the experience? I know this one goes into a lot of depth, but I really do believe that it is important. Um, how did you find out about the salon? Are you preparing for a special occasion? What is your activity level? Um, slash occupation. Do you play any sports that take a toll on hands or feet? What products do you currently use on your hands, nails, and feet? Are there any special concern you would like to discuss with your salon professional? Um, and then it just says, thank you so much for choosing us and blah, 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 blah. So you can find these at your local um, professional beauty place. Uh, they sell them by the bundle. This one just happens to be free and you can print out as many as you want. Um, up here in this box, it does say that the text should insert the salon name, the address, the phone, and your logo. Or you basically can just copy your business card there to look at this every time before they come in just so that you knew what you did and things like that or just just learn a little bit more about them since you're getting used to your new clients after you've done the consultation then you definitely need to assess the nails see what is wrong and then do your recommendations recommend some products to them or some services that they should try to improve the health of their nails um, the client of their nail shape do they like almond square oval, squoval, like all sorts of different shapes. Um, and you might be thinking, why do you want to know their occupation or lifestyle? Because these nails are not going to work if you work in a factory or you just do really, really intense work or you just clean your house every day, they're going to snap. So some nails are not ideal for every situation. And definitely show her some work that you have done. Say, oh, I'm recommending that you should do a French tip. So flip through your portfolio that you've already made up and say, these are some of the French tips that I've done. Do you see any that you like? Or do you want to just do a classic, which is just the pink and whites? Notice as the service goes on and you notice they might have really dry hands um, and you want to recommend to do a paraffin, ma uh, paraffin dip on them, you know, just continue to suggest additional things and explain to them why this is going to benefit them. 
Also, explain the upkeep on particular service. So for acrylics, you definitely want to fill them every two weeks. Uh, just because they just don't look nice when they're grown out. If they have any questions during the service or after the service is over, so let's say you've done something and they're like, okay, now what? Or, you know, how should I take care of these at home or something? You know, that type of thing. And then tracking appointments is super important. So, um, I definitely recommend to use a planner. This just happens to be an Erin Condren. Um, you don't have to have an Erin Condren at your local beauty professional store. They'll sell jumbo ones that don't have the dates written in them so that you can just write down whatever day it is and it doesn't matter what year it is or anything like that. And they're pretty cheap. This is not cheap. I don't really recommend this unless you really, really like this form, like the way it's set up and things. Track your appointments and give your allow yourself some time to read the client consult card before they come in if they've already filled it out and leave yourself some time to be able to clean up your area before the next client comes in and then you want to do the same thing with that person so let's say that they're just going to get a manicure it should take you about 30 minutes to do that manicure you probably want to leave about 45 to 50 minutes for that one particular person just for a basic manicure it'll take you 30 minutes to do the service it'll take you five minutes to read a couple of minutes to read the consultation card uh, before they come in and um, anything else that you have about the client and also to clean up afterwards. You have to disinfect your implements for 10 minutes so just keep that in mind. Also I think what is a really good idea is to have a service notes type of um, paper to work on and service notes just means I made one on the computer and it kind of messed up so I do apologize. I will link it though if you guys are interested but you can find these um, or just write your own. You can find these at probably your beauty professional store as well or literally just make up your own on the computer not the way I did because that didn't work. I used Excel and somehow it didn't work. It's nice because um, I bought this and it just came in this. This is a client data organizer and it is a purple um, little folder or binder and it just has everything um, with the alphabetized tabs here and it has the client profile here which is basically this form here that they filled out um, but it doesn't go in that much depth so that's why I don't really prefer it but it is there and then this is for just the nail text to use um, and things like that and then on the back is what I'm talking about is that it's got the date the services rendered, retail purchased, retail, um, how much they spent on retail and how much they spent on the service. This one's okay, but it's not my favorite. I like the one that they showed in the book, and they called it service notes, so I kind of did it my own way. And the, I did mine on Excel, but as you can see, it printed out, like, not all the way. It made, like, two large sheets, so I don't know. I'll have to figure out a way to make it, but I'm going to link it down below. And it basically just has a spot for you to put the date, and each colored box is a different person, or is a different um, appointment. This is all for one person. So this is the date, the condition of the nails when they came in, the service that you did. So let's say you did um, acrylics. Um, let's say that the condition of their nails were just super sure and brittle. So you went ahead and put acrylics on them. So then you're going to write down the products that you use. Let's say I use a CND powder for their acrylics and, you know, the CND Moxie monomer and things like that. And then, you know, the color you use, the top and base coat that you use, and cuticle oil. You really want to write that down. It really does matter. Because if they call up tomorrow and they're like, I'm having a reaction, it could be any of those products that you used. Um, and then some at-home care that you have recommended them to do or that they said that they did previously. And then just write down some notes like um, how to do a wrap on this pointer on the left pointer finger before applying acrylics. So you just need to remember that so nothing happens when you go to remove or if you're like filing away and you're like, what's this? Um, so... That's just really important information to know for each client, so you want to pull that out every time, and after you're done, write down in there what you've done, what you've used. Um, and it's pretty basic. So now we're just going to go ahead and reflect on what we've learned today. If you guys really are enjoying this series, though, please give this video a huge thumbs up, and definitely let me know down below in the comments. You're using this comment section to just discuss everything. So I'm going to leave these comments in the in the comments 
section down below and you guys can reply to me or you can just reply normally. Um, and uh, what career path are you most interested in? Do you want to be a more nail tech hands on or do you want to be on the business side of things? Um, do you think that a client consultation is important to you personally? Um, and maybe say why. You don't have to, but maybe why would be good. Um, <clears throat> and what is the best way for you to keep track of clients and their services for you personally? Let's say that uh, you don't think that what I've showed you is going to work for you. So what do you think is going to work for you? And let me know because maybe I want to use it too. Um, or somebody else might want to use it. If you have the Milady Standard Nail Technology Revised 5th Edition book, everything I went over is between the pages 4 through 54. Also, I'm going through this book to teach you about what they didn't teach me at my nail technician school. These are some of the things I wish they would have taught us, but they didn't.